Hello everyone. In the next two lectures, we are going to continue our discussion on advanced function topics. The topic for Monday's lecture is going to be functions as objects. I am going to throw this radical claim at you which states that functions are objects in Python. Let's first do a quick recap of what we have covered so far about objects. Recall that everything is an object in Python, which includes primitive types like integers, strings, floating points, and so on. We then saw that variables contain references to objects. We also covered this concept where lists and dictionary objects can contain references to other objects as items. Let's take this radical claim into consideration now. If I tell you that functions are also objects in Python, then variables can now contain references to functions, correct? Similarly, lists or dictionaries can also contain references to functions as items. We should be able to pass function references as arguments to other functions, just like we are able to pass object references as arguments. Similarly, we should be able to pass a list of function references to other functions. Inside the other function, we should be able to extract these list of function references and we should be able to invoke each of those functions with the reference that we have. Let's consider a simple example. I have an example up on the slide over here. Go ahead and pause the lecture video and go through this example step by step. Keep writing down the observation that you make about objects and references that get created for each line of code. And then try to identify which line of code is radically different when compared to other function examples that we have covered so far. Once you are able to identify the line of code which is very different, Go ahead and leave a comment on the comment section stating which line of code you identified. Let's go through this example. Line number one is creating a new list object which contains three items, one, two, and three. Recall that list object here will get created in the heap memory because objects go into the heap memory which is on the right hand side. So I'm going to create the list object in the heap memory. Then I'm going to add a reference to the list object into the variable called x. Recall that variables and frames reside in stack memory, which is going to come on the left. If you were to provide an explanation for this line in terms of objects and references, you would say that x should reference a new list object. What are we doing in the next line here? We are saying y equal to x. That's going to create a brand new variable called y. y is now going to reference whatever x is referencing. The next line defines a function f. Recall that Python tutor always displays a function object for every function that you create. So far we have been ignoring that and not discussing about it. This lecture is when we start talking about the function object. Whenever you define a function, an object gets created in the heap memory for the function and your function name actually contains a reference to the function object that just got created on the heap memory. If you were able to identify that uh, line number 4 here which says g equal to f is the totally different and new line, then you got the correct answer for my previous question. So far, the places where we have been using function names always follow parentheses because we have always been calling the functions. Notice that this line says g equal to f. f is the name of the function and we do not have parentheses after that. So what exactly does this line mean? It means that I'm creating a new variable g and I'm making it reference whatever is being referenced by the variable f. Recall that f references 
the function object that we created for the function that we define. So G is also going to reference the same function object. Kind of like creating an alias just like you created an alias for the reference to this list object. The next line should be pretty familiar for you. We are just invoking the function by saying F parenthesis and we are going to assign whatever is being returned by that function into this variable z. So z is now going to contain a reference to the string object hi. When you call this function by saying z equal to f parenthesis or z equal to g parenthesis, you are saying the exact same thing because by saying g equal to f, we just created a new name for the function f. So both g and f refer to the same function object over here. Notice one different thing about uh, function frames and function objects in general. Function objects reside in heap memory. And whenever you call the function, you create a frame in the stack memory for that particular function invocation. In this diagram, I didn't quite show the function invocation for the function f, but before creating this variable z, you can imagine that we had a frame for the function f, which created a reference to the string object in there. And once when we return that value from inside the function, the z variable is going to contain a reference to the string object and the function frame would have gotten destroyed once the function returns. Let's talk about similarities and differences between lines of code in this example. Line number one and line number three are very similar. Line number one creates a new list object and makes x reference to it. Line number three creates a new function object and makes f reference to it. Line number two and line number four are also very similar. We are just creating a reference copy for the list object and for the function object. Line number four and five on the other hand are very different. So there is only a subtle difference between making a reference copy of the function and actually invoking the function. The difference comes in the presence or absence of parentheses. If you have a parenthesis, you're calling the function. If you don't have a parenthesis, then you're creating a reference copy for that function object. Let's go through a simple demo using Python Tutor. I'm going to define two functions. The first function is going to be say hi function, which is just going to print hello. And the next function is going to be say bye function. Just going to print see you. Okay. Let, let's just call these functions in the regular way. So let's say that I want to say hi twice and that I want to say bye three times. All right. So um, just because the function is displaying something, it makes sense for me to call it uh, multiple times. If you were to have a function which does something rather than print something, then there is not much point in calling the function over and over again if you pass the same arguments. You can just store the return value into a variable and use that variable instead. Since this particular example defines two functions which print something, it's okay for me to call it over and over again here. So, Let's use this new radical concept that we just learned. And I'm going to say f equal to say hi without the parenthesis. And I'm going to use the function by calling it using the f reference that I just created. And let's say that I want to f update f by saying f is now going to reference say bye. And now if I call f three times, that will reference to the say by function. Let's step through this example from the first. 
Notice that when you define a function, you create a function object in the heap memory. So you create one for say hi and say bye, and you add a reference to that particular object into a variable called say bye and say hi correspondingly. What are we saying next? We are saying f equal to say hi. That's going to make f now reference the function object for say hi. And then we are calling the function f. So f references the say hi function. So we are going to be invoking say hi. Notice that uh, the frame for this particular invocation says say hi as the function name. Then we are printing hello and we are returning none from the function. Similarly, the next invocation also calls say hi function. Then what are we saying next? We used to say that f is say hi. Now we are saying f is say bye by saying f equal to say bye. Then when I call f, that's going to call the say bye function and that's going to return cu, um, not return, excuse me, print cu. If you add a parenthesis here, you change the meaning totally. Now you're saying I'm calling say hi function and capturing whatever is being returned to by the say hi function. Notice that the next line throws an error saying type error none type is not callable. Why is that the case? F contains none. That's because the function doesn't have a return statement. Recall that the default return value from a function is going to be none. So since you called the function instead of trying to make a reference copy of the function, f is now going to contain none. So you cannot make a function call on a none object. You can only make a function call on a function object. Right, let's simplify uh, this particular code over here. Let's say that instead of uh, typing out the same function call over and over again, I want to use a loop to do that. So I'm going to say for i in range of two, what do I want to do? I just want to call the say hi function, right? And similarly, let's actually use the new concept that we learned. So I'm going to call the f function by assigning a reference copy to f from the say hi function name here, which is going to reference to the function object. The next loop is going to be for three times. So I'm going to say for i in range three, I'm going to call f again, but I want to replace f with say by's reference first. So this kind of gave the same output as before. Instead of having to type the function call over and over again, we are using a loop over here. What if we try to generalize this particular concept by defining a new function? And I'm going to call that function call n times. So this particular function is going to take two arguments. The first argument is going to be the reference to the function that we need to call n times. And the next argument is going to be the value of n over here. So let me get rid of all of this code. And I'm going to copy paste this into my function over here. So instead of saying for i in range 2, I want to say for i in range n, call f. And now we can easily use this newly created function to call our say hi and say bye functions, how many ever number of times we need. So I'm going to say n equal to 2 for the first invocation and n equal to 3 for the second invocation of call n times. Hopefully this simple example made sense to you. Feel free to explore a little bit with this example. I'll be wrapping up this video here. In the next video, we are going to talk about more applications of functions as objects.